Hello YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. This is Mrs. Whitetail. As you can see, she has a white nose as well. Even though I don't expect her to take food out of my hand, today is November the 9th here in Australia, where it's kind of five minutes to five in the afternoon. Right, 1655 if you want to talk about it that way but that's eastern daylight saving time right so it's actually um it's an hour earlier than that but it's about to become time for the five o'clock news and we're about to find out how the americans are going with their erection of their prissy dance and so we have mrs whitetail See the white tail? Yeah, that's why I call her Mrs. White Tail. But she's never, ever, ever taken food out of my hand. She comes close. And that's about as close as she comes. And I'm not prepared to harass her with cognitive dissonance far enough as to demand that she come any closer. And there is her footling Joey. How um so ever, the whole theory of this, see how now that she's had a couple of bites of bread, she's not actually prepared to stay quite as close to me. She's like the conservative wing of the wild, unfenced Eastern Grey Kangaroo Mother's Club. She's quite happy to come up and ask to be fed, but as soon as she's got a mouthful of bread, she wants to back off. My response to that is to throw her some more bread just so she doesn't feel like she's under any pressure. However, time has marched on. It's still November the 9th and them the Yankees are still apparently falling into line with all of my prophecies and predictions for the past 12 months. They are apparently electing Donald Trump. It appears that the Yankees from the excited states of Norte Armed Americano would rather have a war with China than with Russia. We'll see. The five o'clock news is about to begin momentarily. Hello and welcome to PM. I'm Nick Grimm. Among our stories tonight, the race for the White House, one of the most acrimonious and divisive in living memory, goes down to the wire with almost every prediction turned on its head as world markets go into a frenzy of activity. The federal government signals it won't compromise on its backpacker tax package and will test Labor's proposed amendments in the Senate and a far more effective and painless method of vaccination that could see the end of needles and syringes, recognised today with a prestigious Young Flory medal. The Manor Patch is an alternative to the needle and syringe. Uh, most vaccines are delivered uh, by a needle, and uh, the Manor Patch is something completely different. And uh, it's something that's inspired from the semiconductor industry. That coming up soon, but first the latest headlines coming now from ABC News. Good afternoon, Helen Zarimus with a news update. Donald Trump has firmed up as a possible US president. Mr Trump's ahead in the electoral college votes and is edging closer to the 270 needed to win the US presidency. Federal Labor MP Linda Burney has accused the Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull of caving into privileged white middle-aged men after he launched an inquiry into race hate laws. The government's opened the inquiry into the Racial Discrimination Act 
amid claims Section 18C stifles free speech. Forgive me for this, but I plan to return to Radio National when they commence speaking about the erection of the Prissy Dunce in the Norte Americanos. The excited states of Norte Armed Americano. Wave of enthusiasm and hope generated by his supporters. None would have imagined then that at the end of his two terms, his successor would be a man like Donald Trump. In the past few hours, world markets were sent reeling as Mr. Trump edged ahead of his opponent, Hillary Clinton. And as we go to air tonight, he appears almost certain to have become America's 45th president. Mrs. Clinton's hopes of becoming the first woman to hold the world's most powerful job appear to have been soundly dashed. Her supporters are gathered at what they had hoped would be her victory party. The decision to hold it in a hotel room beneath an enormous glass ceiling is now a choice that's laced with bitter irony. Well, our North America correspondent Stephanie March is there and she joins me now. Steph, it would be fair to say Hillary Clinton supporters are somewhere in the five stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, maybe even depression, but perhaps it's going to still take some time before them to, them to reach acceptance. Well, that's interesting that you put it that way, Nick. I've just been out there talking to people and they are using all those words to describe how they, how they feel at the moment. They're anxious, they're fearful, they're sad. Some of them have said they're very scared. The mood is just incredibly grim. And as you said, it was supposed to be a victory party. People came here expecting to have a joyous night for them seeing their candidate uh, breaking through that glass ceiling that is physically here above the stage where she's supposed to appear later tonight. Um, but really, it's just been uh, the complete opposite. They've just watched um, the initial exit polls be incredibly wrong, as were the polls uh, going into today that had Hillary Clinton with a slight lead. And now they're just trying to process it. Um, I spoke a short time ago to two supporters in the crowd, a woman, Fern Beck from Massachusetts, and her sister, Mary Matz from Florida, who spent the past 18 <coughs> months campaigning for Hillary Clinton, knocking on doors and making phone calls. Let's just have a listen to what they had to say. In terms of belief and values, this has been very, very hard. To see my country as split as it is, is very, very hard. To see um, a man that really separated all Americans into categories is very hard. And to think that it could be sexism as well, that America couldn't tolerate having a woman, is unbelievable to me. How surprised are you with the way things have gone tonight? I, 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 I'm speechless, and I'm not somebody who's normally speechless. I still hope it's going to be a celebration, but I think I'm beginning to realize that it may not be. And I, I think my feeling, other than everything that has Fern has said, is actually fear. Um, fear that I believe in um, um, climate change, and I'm an environmentalist, and I don't believe in big oil companies, and people know that. And so I'm almost fearful of another McCarthy era, and um, who might, you know, what that might mean. A few of Hillary Clinton's supporters there, our correspondent uh, Stephanie March is there at that uh, ballroom in New York tonight. And Stephanie, is the, what's the sense with the crowd there about the role that gender played in this election? It's not something that people have been bringing up, and as you mentioned, a lot of them are still just in shock. It was an interesting factor in the campaign. Hillary Clinton didn't make a, a overt deal of it, other than to perpetually say she'd spent her life working for women and children um, as a lawyer, as a first lady, um, and uh, as a New York senator. Um, but it was something that Donald Trump brought up. He um, said at one point that Hillary Clinton was playing the woman's card, and that's the only reason people were supporting her. She responded by saying, if I'm playing the woman's card, deal me in. Um, but it really wasn't something that was, you know, overtly dominant in the campaign. The things that really dogged Hillary Clinton were her trustworthiness and the FBI scandal uh, and those types of issues. But what seems to be 
being borne out in part from the exit polls that we're seeing, and it's still very early days to look at exactly what they all mean, is that Donald Trump has just done really well in rural America. And that's where his message of um, free trade, his opposition to free trade, and his uh, promises to bring back jobs to these communities whose industries have been devastated over the past two or three decades, um, has just really resonated. So it's still unclear whether or not this was a protest vote against Hillary Clinton being a woman or a vote for hope and change from Donald Trump supporters or something completely different. And perhaps a sense that there are two distinct Americas. There's the progressive America, perhaps represented by the people around you there in New York tonight, uh, and, and also on the west coast of the United States, in states like California. But that's hollowed out by that large rust belt of middle America. That's right, and it's really interesting that it looks like what this election is coming down to uh, is two particular or three Rust Belt states. That's Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin. Hillary Clinton wasn't able to score an early knockout blow in the southeast, which essentially means Florida and North Carolina, uh, two states that were very competitive right up until the end. Donald Trump has won those. So that's moved the, the race really to the north, to that Rust Belt. Now, Pennsylvania, 97% um, of the votes been counted there. Um, Donald Trump is 50,000 votes ahead. That almost looks like it's a certainty to go to him. And from there, Hillary Clinton doesn't really have a path to victory. She put a lot of effort uh, into to the state, particularly of Michigan in the last week. It's traditionally a democratic state. Um, it's one that uh, Barack Obama uh, managed to win, and it's um, it's not thought often as one that would go Republican. But again, they've been hit by job losses in recent years, um, and that message on Trump's just seems to be resonating there. Um, so yes, you're right. What it has really exposed is that there are two Americas, and whether or not they'll be able to come together after tonight is yet to be seen. And to what extent is, is Donald Trump's victory? Uh... OK, I'm going to come back to this later. I'm just going to put this on pause. Here with Julie Bishop, Australia's foreign minister. Man for Australia, he's an isolationist. He's opposed to free trade. He's threatened to pull out of some America's key international alliances. What is this going to mean for a country like Australia? Well, first, should Donald Trump win the presidency, it may well follow that the Republicans win a majority in the House of Representatives and in the Senate. And if that were to occur, we may well see the end of the bitter gridlock that has beset United States politics for some time now. In terms of the impact on Australia, it's early days. We, of course, have been following the policy pronouncements of each candidate throughout this very long campaign, and they are yet to be fully formed. We are following very closely both candidates' words and policies in relation to trade, because, of course, we have a significant trade agreement with the United States, and might I say there's no indication at all that Donald Trump would want to renegotiate the Australia-US free trade agreement. It's been in place for 10 years. Uh, we run a trade... I've got about a half a minute or so left before the upload limit. I'm going to save that for the 6 o'clock news, which is half an hour away. OK, Pennsylvania just declared for Trump. He's 264 electoral college votes. He needs 270 to be president. What do you think about that? Come on. Yeah, absolutely. I know it tastes good. G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. We're coming up to the six o'clock news. Australia and America has called it for Trump's victory. Good evening, Helen Zaremus with ABC News. The ABC's election analyst Anthony Green says Donald Trump will become the 45th US president. North America correspondent Michael Vincent is at Trump Tower in New York. The 70-year-old businessman has broken history books, becoming the first commander-in-chief not to serve in either the military or in public office. Donald Trump has promised to build a wall with Mexico, prosecute Hillary Clinton, and end a rigged political system. Ultimately, U.S. voters didn't care about his inexperience and temperament. Mr. Trump's comments about women and Latinos didn't hurt him either. Donald Trump will be sworn in as the 45th president of the United States. Michael Vincent, ABC News, New York.
Well, there you go. And now you know. It's turned out just as I have prophesied for the past year, maybe a year and a half. Duck fucking Donald of the Comover tribe has just become erected the prissy duncy of the excited states of Norte Armed Americano. Warbles on a lot for YouTube. Ciao.